What's up guys, welcome to Muscle and Fitness with me Rob Richards for the Ultimate Sports Challenge where today I've been invited down to what is really the depths of downtown Los Angeles, California to meet with a man called Mike Fisher who wants to put me through a circuit that he describes as a mix of weight training and martial arts. Uh, I know, I have no idea either, but let's go meet the man and find out more. Mike, yes. thanks for inviting me down here. It's, uh, Quite a place down here. Yeah. Tell me more about the style of training that you want to put me through and uh, kind of what I'm going to be doing throughout that. Right. Uh, what I'm going to show you are both ballistic and just tradition, more traditional type grinding movements with kettlebells. And I'm going to show you how you can manipulate virtual force and get a lot of work out of a very crude piece of equipment, but just based on being active and moving in different ways that you might not be used to. Grinding, yeah, that's something that. I'm not used to. And ballistic is like that fast explosive power. Ballistic, yeah, that's what I refer to as. If they're they're going to be similar to plyometric movements, but uh, slightly less impact. But the repetition is uh, something that will benefit you greatly. I can see you've got a couple of tires in there and some kettlebells, so I'm guessing there's going to be some weight resistance. We're going to do associated with this. We're going to do some tire flips. I brought a whole bunch of bells. Uh, different weights for you to use. I'm going to teach you some swings and maybe we'll get into some get-ups and snatches. Get-ups and snatches. All right, I'm curious and somewhat excited about this workout. What are we starting on? Uh, let's look at each one and break it down step by step and then uh, let's just get into the circuit and see how I get on. Okay. Uh, these are all metric, so I got 16 kilo right here. This is 35 pounds. Kilos, a lot of that was working in mind. Yeah, I know you. And I only brought, let's see, there's a 20, 44 pounds. 24, 53 pounds. And now we're talking. And I got some smaller ones just uh, in case. 12 kilo, 26 pounds. Yeah, oh. A few of those, that's going to build up. So what I'm going to talk about a lot today are principles like uh, tension, relaxation, and how you kind of want to focus on being either on one end or the other and being conscious of everything you're doing, being active in every direction you're moving, and also on linking. A lot of these exercises are very dynamic, so they will they'll build you, they'll kind of feel like they're uh, linking you together in ways that you're not used to in bodybuilding type workouts where you're just building components at a time. Here right. you're developing muscle systems. Right, yeah, with, with a lot of the weight training, we're stuck on a machine or doing a very particular like range of movement that we're only using one or two muscle groups right. at that time, then we move on. So right. just something a little bit different, going into more of that functional, functional systemic movements. training where we're doing kind of multiple movements all in one. What we're gonna do first is, and assuming you're we're somewhat warm, Okay. We're always going to lock your chest in a soft extension or just that it's neutral. Okay, Your spine is neutral. We're going to soften your knees a little bit. They're ready to react to the flexion at your hips. We're going to pull your hips actively back until you feel you can reach the bell. So the knees only bend minimally. We're trying to focus on the flexion extension at the hip. Got it. So you grab, keeping the heels down on the ground. We're just pushing your heels down to stand up. Exhaling as you do. And then always inhaling and pressurizing on the way down. Keep your eyes about where the horizon would be, like 20 feet in front of you right now. That's right. So always lock the chest down, yeah. Soft knees, and then try to feel where your crease is on your hips, where you think you're gonna bend from, and actively pull back there as you, as you descend. Yep, that's good. Yep. So we'll just do four or five. Go ahead and let it hit the ground every time. And right away, we're starting to time your breathing with your movement so you get that rhythm. Always inhaling on the way down, exhaling on the way up. A little bit different than the, the whole barbell. Right. You really do squat down low. Exactly. Uh, so, that. what I'm going to do now, and this is what I got used to doing, I'll get a slightly smaller one for you. We're going to do what's called a pendulum swing. Okay. So what we'll do now, comparatively, you felt these muscles working to perform the last movement, and I got a smaller weight, so obviously you're able to pick this up pretty easily. We're gonna go the same way, deadlift breathing the same way, and now with your hands only, we're trying to high pass it back like you would with a football. Not letting go, but we're focusing on 
feeling the contact. When the bell goes back, something has to stop it, and that should be your inner thigh, something close to where your hips are at. So it should go like this, back. And just think going back, back, back. Like I'm standing behind you with a clipboard, trying to tap the clipboard. It's like another one of those things where they're just tapping me on and getting me to do the most ridiculous things that they can think of. So your feet stay flat. Imagine dripping the ground with your feet. That's right. Good. Just a few and you can sit it down. Nice. So what I'm going to have you do now is, what I like to have people do is, uh, we'll, we'll go back to the same deadlift, and then I want you to focus on just locking out really hard. Through your glutes and quads, we'll also add a little bit of uh, ab racing too. Imagine I'm going to come over and give you a punch in the stomach at the same time, like you're sticking your finger in electrical socket. Okay. So, at the top of your deadlift, we're not going to do it too soon, but right at the top, you're just going to stiffen up really hard. Okay. This is where that ballistic comes in. Exactly. Okay. okay. So it should look just like this. Same thing you have been doing, but finished with a little explosion at the top. So, always breathing in at the bottom. Save a little bit of air for that explosion. I want to hear it come out. Exactly good. Good, just get one more. Beautiful. Good. Let me ask, when you do a lot of this training, do you wear a cup? No, 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 no. <laughs> you literally have not, balls um, of iron. Unless you got unordinarily short arms, then uh, that's I'd never needed that. <laughs> so I always usually provide that disclaimer for guys because that's the, the first thought that they have, but never had a problem with that. Um, All right, so guys, remember that short arms equals wearing a cup when you do training like this. <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna do now is, we'll go back to the lighter one, and we're gonna combine those last two things you did. We'll start with the pendulum swing, so you get a sense of the contact with the hands on your, near your hips. Okay. And then we're just gonna stand up explosively, driving your heels down to the ground, and that should project the bell forward as your hips extend, right? So we'll start like this, and again, when you feel the timing is right for you, upon contact, your hips will act like a diving board. They'll just project your hands off. All of this will be loose. Okay. So, back, 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 and forward. Once the first one happens, we'll do several in succession. So, remember to time your breathing with the movement. I'm gonna do a towel pull before you do the towel swing. All I'm gonna do, I have you hold it on the ends here. I'm gonna reach behind you, pull it back. Oh, I have you stand up. It'll feel like a deadlift again, but this time the resistance coming from behind you instead of from straight down. Okay, right down. So bending the same way. My hand's gonna go right at the base of your spine here, okay? Let me reach through and grab the towel. Go ahead and soften, pull your hips back like we did before. Neutral spine, eyes up, okay? And now just stand up. Good. Go ahead and do it again, and then lock out a little harder when you do. There we go. Feel your glutes really working, okay? One more. Good. All right. So now, we'll go through the handle of this bell That's, with the towel. I've got to say, actually, that, that really is a great method, as abstract as it may seem, right. in getting your mind to actually think, project the hips. It's not just standing up and then coming back to that start position. It's like that, you know, the whole thing punching through the back of the head. Mm -hmm. Hips need to almost end up a little bit forward so that when you do snap them, yeah. you have that pressure exactly. on the hips. It's an interesting way of thinking, but I like it. Right. What I want to see is this. You're going to grab the towel right by the handle on the bell. The towel will slide through your hands a little bit as we do this. Okay. And what we're trying to avoid is allowing the bell to bob around in the towel like that. You don't want it rough. We're going to keep it tight and it should just look like a pendulum on a clock. The tension in the towel remains the same. So your hips will have to essentially wait for your hands. So it's going to be timing like comes this. in. Along exactly. the equation. And you're going to become a human crane. Okay? 
These are just hooks. This is just your cable. That linkage to your engine is white. here. Right, okay. So, go ahead, grab the towel close to the handle there. And we're gonna start slow. We're always locking out hard every time. So start with that same pendulum swing. And when the gelt bell goes behind you, just snap it forward with the hips. Push it from your hips. There you go. Okay, I'm gonna make you fight me once the first one happens. Go up. Now forward. Now. Do it again. Okay, right back at me. With the hips. Yep, again. Good. There we go. We can breathe. More from here. Hips forward. Good. There you go. Good. Hard with the glutes. Squeeze your glutes hard every time. Good. Two more. Last one. Good. Relax. Got to change your mindset from the whole weight training aspect. You know, it's almost slow instead of when you come up and. Right. It's a much slower movement. Yeah. But with this one, it's that you've got that pendulum swing going back and forth. Right. Something that with weight training you don't want to have. Right. Okay. As I've said, it's a lot more dynamic. You have to control that deceleration. There's a very high value to that. So with a, as opposed to a, a barbell oriented power movement like a clean, you're just going to throw the weight down after the movement's done. Here you got a production, reduction, and redirection. Yeah, There's that. control. The eccentric part of the movement is that much more emphasized. Exactly. With this. So what you'll also see is. Once you really get comfortable with doing the swing, we can engage the abs and lats and get more out of the swing. We can amplify that virtual force. So instead of just floating the bell up, which is acceptable with the hips, I can make it so much more. Up, up is how I would start, but eventually with the hands, if I so chose, I can snap it back down. The other, the other two basic ballistic moves are the clean and the snatch. The clean is what I refer to more of as a transition movement, so I'll show you the snatch. Okay? Think of the swing as a, an explosive horizontal projection. You have the same violent hip snap with the snatch, but it's more horizontal, or okay. more vertical, my bad. Okay. Clean movement. Swing. Right. Straight up. Yeah, going this to the shoulder. And right, push up. So there's nothing that happens at the wrist. You're using the upper back to cock the elbow back to prepare for the punch at the top. If I don't punch at the top, I get this nice little flop, and that's not cool. If I got 70 or 80 pounds in my hand, that's not cool. No, that could, that could break your wrist. Right. So wrists are always straight. You know that punch too. Exactly. So what we want, really, the thing with the punch at the top of the snatch. It's more about timing than anything else. You want the ball, or where most of the weight of the bell is, to stall out right at the point where you sneak the handle under it with the punch. Can it feel for it? Right. Okay, first time. <laughs> so first time, check this out. Since we're in the dirt right here, I'm gonna have you grab it with two hands, cup the other hand, grab it with one, cup the other hand over like this, over your other hand. Exactly. Pull it up to your shoulder, and just let it, Flop onto the back of your hand here. We're gonna press it up, okay, all the way. Lock the elbow out, okay? Stay tight in the lat, let that hand go. And I want you to project the bell into the dirt, okay? Make it land about a foot behind you. Just go ahead and force it hard down and back. Show me a big hole in the dirt after. Go ahead. Actually, dump it down and let it go. Good, okay. What I want you to do now is just let your hips remain extended until your hand gets down there. So your hips kind of react to your hand. Stay up, only bend at the last minute when you have to. So down, 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 and then... Right, and then follow through a little with the hand. Let's do it. Something I've never been told to do, let go of the weight at the end. Okay, straight. Wrist straight too. There we go. Okay, project it down there. Yes. <laughs> Let go a little sooner, we'll do it one more time. Again, it's like reprogramming my whole mindset about right. yeah. how to train. Watch me, I'm gonna chuck it. Okay. Okay. Oh, the benefits of using kettlebells. Oh, yeah. Yep. 
Yes. Good. Over that much. Right. Okay, now remaining conscious of the roll of your hips in this, we're just gonna do that same movement. I want you to make me think that that same thing will happen, but the hips return it back to its starting position. So, this is you right here. Pressing it up, doing the same thing, coming down, letting the hips snap it right back up. You won't even have to think about that punch. It should just happen. Be a little more active with the hand. Good, there you go, one more. And not so abrupt at the bottom. Let your hips slowly recoil. There it is. Open and then punch a little harder. Beautiful. Let your hips break on there. Nice. Yeah, like you said, one of the key words that I picked up early on is repetition, repetition, repetition. Right. And that's getting feel for it and then just Keep doing that same movement right. until it becomes like just a pattern. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. I love that one. So, and that's that's one of the things that another advantage of proper training with these is that recruitment pattern you can get over and over again, repeated over three, five hundred times, it becomes instinctive, like second or nature. In like one set? No, not in one set, <laughs> but over time. Just like a baseball player practicing a swing, you have to do X amount of reps. Eventually, you don't have to think about it anymore. It just happens. Go like you're gonna fight me real quick. Okay. A lot of people, I can just get the, the right response out of this. Go ahead, hands up like guard position. And Okay, good. So you kind of tense up a little bit when you anticipate that impact, yeah? Uh -huh. Okay, so imagine just doing that a little more like you're gonna get shot out of a cannon. We're pulling the elbows down and in, tight to the body. All of this is hard on your rib cage, okay? Don't let me pull your elbow off. So down and in with those elbows like you're going to your hip, okay? Go ahead, way down, don't let me move it. Okay. And then hands tight here too. And that's how the rack position should feel. Okay? You should just feel real hard, okay. solid. Okay? Wrists are always straight, just like in running, just like in boxing with kettlebell lifting. So until you know how to clean, we're just gonna cheat curl, use two hands. Again, I'm talking about linking and not isolating at any time. Two hands, cup the other hand over, bring it up, and we're starting here. And then once again, like with the snatch, I'll have you start from the top down and we'll reverse it and bring it back. Project it down <laughs> on the rock. And then I'll have you do the same thing. Hips, snap it back up. All right. That's right, two hands. So what we want is this, okay? You want as much contact on the ball as possible. You want your hand under your chin, and again, we're pulling this down toward your hip. So good lat activation. We're trying to avoid that external rotation, so the hand is always inside the elbow. Should feel like most of the weight rests on your forearm, like on a rack. Yep. And then again, this like a diving board. It stays straight until something acts on it. So let the bell loosely kind of go free fall down, and then as it falls, you're high passing it back, and then the hips react. So we're gonna let this one go. Let it go again. Beautiful. Good. All right. Guys, if you're in the gym doing this, probably a good idea not to be letting go of the weight. Yeah. Right behind you. Yeah, you will get kicked out of it. <laughs> <for sure. laughs> so bring an extra mat or do it outside. On the grass is the best yeah, place. Make sure you got a buddy behind waiting to catch it. Yeah, exactly. Somebody you don't like very much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So once again, as with the snatch. We'll do employing that same hip snap. We'll come down as you did and let the hips bring it right back to where it started. Okay. And on you. Beautiful, good. Now, once again, if he trusts me, I could stand right in front of him, but I'll tell him right now, in order to smooth out the transition into the rack position, just imagine zipping up your sweater so the hand stays close to the body, it'll land nice and smooth right now. Good, one more. And a little less abrupt with the hips. There we go, and set it down. That one should have felt perfect. Good, drop it. It's Very getting good. there. It's I like about this, what questions I get actually asked is, uh, 
in differences in strength and size on like left and right. right. And with this, you're always working with one arm. You're never using really two arms to do the same movement. And if you are, you've got a weight in each. So you really have to stabilize and work each muscle independently. And that's what I really like about the style of training as opposed to machines or even barbells. Absolutely correct. There are so many more variables and you have to enact or, or produce so much more control and that is why it is at such a great benefit. Of course, you have to have some base of knowledge to you know how to approach the moves and you gotta know how to protect your back and how to breathe, but really, in my opinion, the, the options are endless. You know, I, I love, uh, you can flip them around and I think it's fun, you know? It is something different, that's yeah. for sure. Okay, so that's the kettlebell training. What else have we got that makes up the circuit? Um, I'm just gonna have you flip some tires and pretty much I'm using the tires just to wear you out so the other stuff gets harder and you're gonna have to really focus on what I just taught you and uh, using your hips to get through. Wear me out, how many, how many reps are we talking all in all? Uh, total, I got a workout that's about 200 reps. So we're gonna do a combination of the tire flips, We'll do some other leg movements. I have some, some orthodox and orthodox stuff that I'm doing, some stuff that I've kind of made up on my own, and uh, you're gonna have to do it all. All right, welcome to my home gym right here. It's a little bit cooler in here. Like one degree. <laughs> yeah, not by much. Yeah. Okay, so I, I see you've got everything set up here. We've got the tires, we've got the kettlebells again. Let's just run through one more time the sequence of what we're gonna be doing right. and uh, break down each exercise again. Okay. So what I thought I would do for you would be to set up a workout that's similar to the 300 workout, something that's pretty popular, I've seen on the internet, gone through it a couple times. Um, basically what it is, real quick, we're gonna do some jumps and tire flips, and my only intention with that is to kind of wear you out before things get a little more technical. Okay. So I got a little uh, distance set up here from one cone to the other. We're going about 20 yards down and back. And then we're gonna go to push-ups. A uh, little bit of stability element added with the hands on the kettlebell. Gonna have the feet up on the tire, so that's just gonna make it a little harder. And then we'll go to a double rack uh, squat push press, a full parallel squat, pressing when you stand. And then a little bit of a, an untraditional, unorthodox, like a barbell style clean with those same bells. So basically go from squat push press into the barbell style clean, your legs are gonna hurt. Yeah, I, I, I'm fatigued just hearing all of these words. Not to mention I'm, I'm sweating just stood here. Um, what, am I doing it twice? What's with two tires and so on? Uh, I'm gonna race you through. <sighs> head to head. Head to head, yeah. So right, we'll go the, for time. This would be a first. So not only am I being tested on those five areas of fitness that we're gonna have a look at after, but um, I'm literally gonna have the challenge of going up against the pro on each of those exercises. So no doubt he'll be ahead of me, which is gonna be even more challenging for me and pushing me to stay on top of my game. But uh, right. I'm ready. Yeah. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, so we start on the tire flips and then we just rolled into the next. Right, so jumping in and out of the tire before each flip down to the cone and back. I got the bell set up right here. We'll go into what's next, if you forget all the way. Okay, before we start, I just want to compare the stats. Yeah. Um, weight, what do you weigh? 175. So I'm about 178. Height? Six feet. So you've got an inch or two on me there. Uh, years of training with this particular kind of sport? With, uh, I'm gonna say, well, specifically with the kettlebells, I'm looking at six, but in total, including my athletic career, a little over 10. That's about the same with me, so. The stats stack up the same. Um, age, we're not too far off. I mean, if we were kind of going in the ring against the fight, we'd be pretty evenly matched. Right. Uh, <laughs> I guess there's nothing left to do than uh, stop the first exercise and just get on with it. Stop sandbag. <laughs> okay, let's go.
Go for it. You're ready. Huh? You're ahead of me. You're good. I got one more push up. Squat, push press first. Push press first. There you go. Just push press. You don't have to play every time. Barbell style cleans for 10. Stand up each time. That's your rep.
top. Good. Get that punch crisp. That's right. Time it right. Wrist straight. Wrist straight. Fight that fatigue through your forearm. Keep the wrist straight. Good. Woo! A lot of grip work, yeah? My legs are gone. Grip's gone. Heart's pounding. Air is gone. Yeah. My air is gone from that first tire flip back. Right. And that's, you know, I, I kind of want to do it like that so that you could, after not having done a lot of them, kind of appreciate where you could go with the kettlebell snatch and how hard it can be. I've got to say for the camera, when we first met and we were doing this, I said, Mike, I don't want you to make it easy, but I want you to start at more of a lower level. This is my style of training. And I just know from my experience, that if you put me at that top level, I'm not gonna be able to finish it. But, honestly, how easy was this? On a scale of one to 10, compared to that 300 style of training that you were telling me about. This is actually, well, I wrote this workout up specifically for this purpose, and I would put this at about the same level. Um, we didn't do quite as many movements, it was really focused a lot on legs, but this is a backbreaker. I'm recovering faster, my recovery's good. Right. That really, really tested me on, I felt some endurance, some endurance and form and technique, because like you said, if you're not using your back, the arm locked out, the wrist up, right. the hips, to help bring that weight up, you're gone like It'll halfway through. It'll break you. So, I came here for challenge. And that was to really see how someone from my background, I guess more that gym, health and fitness, aesthetic purpose, let's be honest here, and coming into your world of, you know, this ballistic, very functional, you know, very 300 style training. High repetitions, using strength, form and technique as well. Five areas, let me start off on, uh, let's have a look at strength. How would you rate me out of 10? 10 being highest, one being not very good. Oh, you're for your size, you're excellent. You're at, you're a solid eight. 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 Yeah, eight to nine. Okay, <laughs> I, we're always gonna round up, so I'm gonna take a nine. Okay. Um, let's move over and have a look at uh, the good injury. The first injury from filming, muscle and fitness, I, oh, wow. I tore my cuticle. <laughs> Moving on, stamina. Let's have a look at stamina or endurance, you know, that we would define as you know, the ability to continue to perform a task or exercise right. for that duration. Right. Uh, purely at like CV endurance, just aerobic endurance, I'm thinking that you're also high on that scale. I would put you at a seven, but for a strength athlete, I would consider a seven a very high ranking. It's hard yeah, to yeah, I would. be as strong as you are and have that high level of endurance. Awesome, okay, so what's that, uh, an eight and seven? Yeah, so we're averaging eight right now. Okay, let's move on and have a look at uh, speed. I think this is a really important component of this style of training. Uh, speed, yes. Uh, to me, speed is very simply how fast you're able to move. Uh, you can quantify that with different modalities. Like if you're talking about running speed uh, without, without a power component, that is to say without the start, you're not looking at quickness where there's a power component or force really. Um, speed, yes, you're good. Uh, but I think that speed has to be part of the power equation coupled Absolutely. with force. Right. Yeah, I love that one. So, score for speed. Okay, score for speed. Uh, I'll say seven also. Okay, seven. I'll take that one, that's good. Uh, fourth one for me, let's have a look at, we looked at strength, power, let's look at the opposite one. So, if we touched upon um, that explosive like power aspect. Let's have a look at more of the strength, which is, again, I kind of define as the ability to continue to perform at that level, similar right. to endurance, but more with that resistance like a element. Muscle endurance or, or power endurance exactly. you're referring right. to. That's one of the very attributes that I enjoy about the proper use of kettlebells is that you can mm -hmm. develop what they call power endurance, and that is the ability to sustain really forceful, powerful contractions over a duration. Um, right. and you're, you, you do really well. Um, you, you, originally, you were doing like 50 reps of those. Right. Whereas me, 
maybe a little bit heavier weight, but certainly spread out over a barbell. You know, 10 is my max, so to, to times that by five, right. and with a different form of technique, I mean, that really is challenging. Right. And uh, yeah, certainly your, your strength endurance, um, to, defi to, to state it properly, that's also very high. I would put you at an eight for, for strength awesome. endurance. Okay. That's good, I'm happy with that. The fifth component, I'm gonna hand over to you. Okay. And that you can kind of encapsulate that one term or ability rather that describes the style of training. What would that be? Um, I would call it dynamic power. Um, I like that and one. that's the first time you've had that dynamic power. Cool. Okay. And there is uh, within that equation is flexibility, but also the force and speed components. So dynamic power is just the ability to um, impose your will in whatever plane, whether it's frontal sagittal transverse, you know, with a healthy range of motion and without uh, high odds for injury. And for that, out of ten, you would give me a. On what I'm seeing, you're good. Uh, let's call it a eight. Awesome. Okay, well, I'm a little bit out of breath. I think my brain needs some more glucose to be able to tally up those scores. But final question is, based on what you've seen today, and based on my experience and my field of training, I always end with, do you think I have what it takes that with the right training, I could come into your world? And I like what you said earlier about doing the 300 reps, and that was when the trainer we said was uh, uh, the 300 movie, mm -hmm. that he set that limit and there was a time limit of about 20 minutes right. for each of the actors to have to do these 300 reps of different exercises, mm -hmm. uh, and we'll tell you more about that later, to be able to get into the movie. So based on that, do you think I have what it takes to do a similar training style and to get into that top cast of 300? Absolutely, absolutely. So would it be a pass or a fail? It definitely could pass. Pass. Yeah. Okay. What I like about that workout, I'll add too, is the workout is if you look at uh, one of the most common tests among different sports is the vertical jump, and that's a, a very uh, valid measure of athleticism because sure. it's just how you can properly maneuver your own weight. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of similar like body weight type exercises in that workout. So this workout is also set up a little bit the same. Final note for me, it it pushed me to the point where no kidding. I was eyeing up that bathroom there, that toilet, and thinking I was gonna have to go and take a verbal break, let's say. I mean, it really does push you, it punishes your body. Right. Yeah. Way beyond the point where in the gym you lift, you hit work set, you hit that point of failure. Your training threshold, which I describe it as, you stop, regroup, recover, and you go in a little bit high. This, you hit your training threshold from the get-go, and then it's continually having to push through that. It's, it's a great, great start of training. I don't think I'm gonna use it every time, but it's really great to know that having not done this before, I can come in from a weight training background and you know perform fairly well. Exactly. So, final words, Mike. Been fantastic. Both Muscle and Fitness and myself, thank you for inviting us down here. Thank you. Where can all of our uh, readers and followers go find out more about you as an athlete and also about your training methods and stuff? Uh, go to my website, it's ignitionfitness.com. Ignitionfitness.com have a little bit of a background and description of my services and uh, my philosophy. And uh, if they happen to find themselves here in California, where are you located? I'm in Rancho Cucamonga, California. So guys, hit me up on Twitter, follow Mike, get down here, and give your hands a try at this 300 style inspired training. Anyway, that's all for me and Mike here on Ultimate Fitness Challenge from Muscle Fitness. Stick around and join me next time when I'll be around much of California and outside of here in America to find out more challenges to try my hand out and to see if I get a pass or fail from my background in weight training. See you guys then.